Hello everyone. I am back for another tutorial and today we're going to talk about banks. Um, I've set up a map here, a very basic map with a camera that can change between three states. So here you'll see in my map in it, I create a vis visibility revealer for all active players and I call this update camera function. Now I have this preset with three camera state, normal, far and close. If you're wondering what a preset is, then check my one of my other tutorials about presets and records. And you can see what this is. And then we have this array with room for 15, since we have 15 players. And it's a preset of camera state. Uh, we have this update camera, which takes in the player ID and then checks this array with the player ID and checks if it's normal, then it's just set to this distance, the camera to this distance, if it's far to this distance, and so on. I'm not focusing so much about the camera, I can do camera tutorial later if people want to know more about the camera. Uh, this is more going to be focused on the bank. Finally, we have this chat trigger here that if we type camera, it will change the camera. If it was normal, it will change it to far, and it will show a message that we changed it to far. If it was far, it will change it to close. And if it was closed, it would change it back to normal, and it will trigger the update camera function that we have here. So I hope you don't mind that I pre-code this, but I wanted to focus on the banks and not on setting up the camera states, because this would take me 10 minutes alone. So if you think this is a bad idea and you would prefer it if I actually do all the coding of the map in the tutorials, then let me know and I'll do that next time instead. Anyway. So we got the camera set up, and uh, now we're going to focus on banks. This will be a two-part tutorial, I think, or we're going to divide up the... I'm going to do, do it in two parts first. I'm going to set up the basic bank saving loading, and then I'm going to talk about some limitations that the bank has, and I will explain to you how you can get around those limitations. So the first thing we need to do is we will make a new folder. We'll call it banks. And in here, we're going to, first we're going to open the banks, because we're going to have to do this anyway. So we're going to need some new folders here. We're going to need triggers, variables. Just like with dialogues, we need to store, uh, store the banks in some kind of variable when we, after we open it. So we're going to add a new variable here, player banks. And it's going to be of a type bank, and it's going to be an array of 15. I'm just going to fill this with player 1, because as you will see in a moment, it's kind of a pain in the arse to work with banks because of some of the limitations. So we're going to add a new trigger here, bank init. Uh, we could make this an action as well and call it from our map init. Maybe that would make more sense, because then we have all our init functions in one place instead of having lots of different init functions all around. So init or banks init. All right, it doesn't need to take anything else. Um, loads all the banks. So to load a bank, we need to call two actions. Go here to bank. The first thing you should do is you should preload the bank. And Here's one thing you have to note. You cannot use variables here for either of these. So you cannot do this in a loop. This has to be typed out one line at a time. As you read at the bottom here, you cannot use variables or expressions. This means that you have to type your bank name in here as a string. So bank tutorial is my bank name. And for player one. And then I'm going to need my next action which is open bank, this actually opens a bank. The preload, you can do this fine without the preload if you play single player and just launch it through the editor, but once you go on Battle.net, you will need this preload. So it doesn't hurt to put it in. Once again, we need a bank name, it needs to be exactly the same, so I'm just gonna copy it for player one. Now if you want to do this for player two and three, you have to copy up these two lines and change the player number manually. You cannot, once again, do this in a loop because it will not work. You could put ifs around and check if the player is in the game, but I don't think it has any 
effect on your game to try out to load a bank for a player that is not there. At least I haven't noticed anything. So just go ahead and load for all the players you want. For now, I'm just going to set it up for player 1 and 2, like this. And in my map init, I'm going to add my banks init function, action. So yeah, now my banks are loaded, and now we can do stuff with them. Uh, of course, what am I doing? We have to put them into a variable. Here you can use uh, variables if you want, but Player banks, since we are using numbers for other places, it makes no sense. And last open bank. Once again, the same here for player two. Last open bank. So basically, you have to copy up these three lines over and over for every bank you want to open. All right, so we have our bank open. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to hook it in here so that when it updates the camera, it also saves what camera what the camera value has been updated to to the bank so I think it makes more sense to put it here in the bank actions some new actions banks store camera settings parameter is going to be the player ID and the actions are actually fairly simple bank Um, we, if you look here, bank, you have some store here, but you cannot store presets. All right, so we're going to go in here and copy the switch. Going back in here, pasting it, just removing these actions there. So, store camera setting. We're going to have to make up our own uh, values for it, so I'm just going to use... Um, integer value for normal is going to be one key here you can use variables so you can type here uh, camera setting key you could also put it as a actually it's probably better to put it out here uh, if you have lots of keys you could put them all in a record and then just make a variable global variable with an instance of that record I'll show you how to do that, just so you have, you know how to do it. So we make a new record here. Banks keys, and in here we put camera setting key. It's going to be a string. It's going to be default to camera setting. All right. So we're going to make two vari variables here. You will see in a second. Banks. Uh, keys record keys it's going to be a record which is at the top bank keys is already selected it's not going to be an array it's fine and we're going to need one more banks section and that's also going to be a string and my section, you don't really have to worry about this unless you plan using multiple sections. Just for consistency, player banks. All right. So, store my key. I go to variable, bank keys, member, 